Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a double declining balance problem showing depreciation and we're going to use Excel of course. So if you're new here, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn where we're working through the financial accounting chapters. We're in chapter 9. I already have videos on straight line depreciation and units of production depreciation. So we're working on double declining today and I've got articles, videos, playlists all for these chapters. So let's start with double declining balance. Now remember depreciation is a system of cost allocation. We're not trying to figure out what the equipment or machine is worth. And everything is depreciated in plant assets except for land. So we need to know four things always. We need to know the cost, the salvage value, the useful life, and the depreciation method. And so we're working on double declining balance. Now double declining balance is a little bit different it's not going to mathematically work out, so we've got some rules we need to follow. So number one, it is double the straight line rate. So what does that mean? Well, I just gave you an example here to the right. A five-year asset, we're going to divide by five. So that's basically saying the straight line rate is every year we'll take one-fifth. And so we're going to double that, so the fraction would be two over five or two-fifths. Same thing with seven, one-seventh versus two over seven or 10 years, double the straight line rate would be 2 over 10. So when we first calculate, we're going to ignore the salvage value, but at the end, we'll have to adjust. So we're going to plug the very last year because it won't mathematically work out. We've got to pay attention when we're working double declining balance. Now, declining balance method is really the overall method, but two times the straight line rate is called double declining, so it's kind of a special case scenario. And generally, uh, you could do 1.5 declining or 1.75, but generally uh, double declining is the rate that we use. So I'm just going to show double declining. Now, the rate stays the same, but the balance goes down. And this is called an accelerated method because it's going to be faster than straight line. So the way to do this, let's just work a problem. So our problem we've been working on had a cost of 475,000, had a life of five years, has a salvage value of 25,000. And let's just say we purchased for the full year, January 1st, 2025. So what is our double declining balance rate? Well, it's gonna be two divided by the five. Two divided by five, so it's two fifths. Now, you can use that fraction, but let's convert that fraction into a percentage. So 2 divided by 5 is going to be 40%. We're going to use this, so let me highlight this. This is not given. This is something we need to calculate. So we're going to use that 40% as our double declining balance rate. Now, the other thing is, what is our depreciable base? Well, if our we take our cost minus the salvage value, we're going to depreciate 450000 total. Not anything above or not anything below. We're going to force it. We're going to have to plug at the very end, adjust, however you want to think about this, at the very end to be 450000 All right, so let's do our depreciation schedule. And I've already had here, we're going to plug 2029. It may not mathematically work out. So let's start with our book value. Our book value is going to be 475,000. Now, we're not using the depreciable base. We're not using the 450 right now. We're going to start with the book value. And to get depreciation expense each year for double declining balance, we're going to take the preceding book value times the 40%. That's double the straight line rate. And I'm going to multiply that every time. So I'm going to make that an absolute value. So our first year depreciation is going to be 190,000. So what's our accumulated depreciation for the first year? Well, 190,000. And what is our book value going to be? Well, our book value is going to be our cost always. Make that absolute minus the accumulated depreciation. Cost divide, minus the accumulated depreciation is going to be 285,000. Now let's do one more, then we'll be able to copy it down and see um, what we need to do to adjust. So we'll take the year, preceding year's book value times the 40%, which is our double declining balance rate, 
and that's 114,000. Our accumulated depreciation is going to be 190 plus 114. And our book value is going to be the 475 minus the 304. So it's going to be 171,000. So now we have enough we can copy this down. And if you're not careful, you think, okay, that we, I did it. I know what I'm doing. But let's do the sum here and make sure. If we do the sum of all these, then we've depreciated $438,064. We want our depreciation to be $450,000. Well, we need another $12,000 or so. So how do we do this? Well, here's what we can do. We can, we're going to plug this. We're not going to use... A, um, a formula here, we just need to figure out well, how much more do we need to depreciate. We want to depreciate where our book value is down to 25000 okay? Or we need to depreciate where our total depreciation expense is 450000 So here's what we're going to do. Let's take the preceding number of 61000 subtract out the salvage value of twenty five. We want to depreciate 61 minus 25 we're going to depreciate another 36,000. So this is a plug number. I'm going to kind of highlight that so you know that's not using a formula there in terms of the two-fifths or 40%. So what we have is we have depreciation expense of 36,000. We got to exactly 450,000. And um, here is our complete double declining balance depreciation schedule. All right, a couple of little uh, journal entries here. What is the year one depreciation expense entry? Well, it's going to be 190,000 and 190,000. So depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. For year two, it's going to be the 114,000. So it's different amount each year and we get the largest amounts at the very beginning. So double declining balance is an accelerated method. Now, there's a little wrinkle. We'll do that in the next problem where we have a partial year. What if you buy it not on January 1st, you buy it maybe on July 1st or April 1st or September 30th? What do we do if there's a partial year? And we'll do that next video. So see you on that next video. Thanks for watching.